you're looking for a way to build your own acoustic treatment panels uh, for your home theater or your studio, come to the right place. This video will show you how to do it really inexpensively and you'll be able to obtain all your materials from your local hardware store or Home Depot or Lumberyard and it'll make a huge difference especially if you're doing uh, recording, uh, mixing and mastering in a small space. Being able to trap that bass will make your work so much more productive. It's really worth it. Here's a list of materials that you're going to need. This is how your end pieces will look when they're done and this shot shows an acoustic ceiling tile laid down between the two pieces to get the proper measurement. Make sure your measurement isn't too tight so your acoustic ceiling tile fits in comfortably. Start out by cutting your 1x4s to proper length. Cut them to 47 and 3 quarters inches which will give you the proper length to fit your bats of insulation. I used a cutout piece of cardboard to uh, trace out my side holes. This particular shape is really easy to cut out with a jigsaw. And I'm tracing out these patterns. You'll want to be careful not to make your side holes too big or you'll weaken uh, the sides of your panels too much. So watch out for that. You'll want a drill bit large enough to get your uh, jigsaw blade into. And then you just cut from one drill hole to the next and it cuts your pattern out really nice and easy. It's not absolutely necessary to cut out the side holes in your panels but there is an acoustic advantage to it because you'll have less uh, low end bouncing around back and forth between your panel ends. It is a lot more work but the advantage of having more low end absorption overall in your panels makes it worth it. Here again is how they're going to look when you're done. And another advantage is that with that much material gone, they're going to be lighter. You want to take some time to sand off your rough edges and all your slivers uh, so that doesn't interfere with your fabric when you start putting that on. The next step is to cut out your 1x2s. And again, a good way to measure that is by using your acoustic ceiling tiles. Just be sure not to uh, make them too tight. Next I attached my ends and sides together and I think I used about a two or two and a quarter inch screw which should be plenty. And I always always use pilot holes uh, because you're working with pretty thin wood and so splitting your wood is almost inevitable but if you run pilot holes it's time consuming again but very much worth it because you're going to end up uh, with a nice strong um, panel and you won't have to worry about splitting your wood. Here I put two screws in each in each end. Take your time to measure very accurately and cut accurately and make square cuts. And if you do, your panels will end up being relatively square, which helps a lot. The wood in your side panels will have a tendency to either bow in or out, so make sure that it always bows in. As you can see, it's coming out nice and square. And uh, again, two pilot holes and uh, two screws on each end. You'll also want to countersink your screws just a little bit. And there you have a complete panel ready for taking the fabric, which is the next step. I first cut my fabric to fit the length of the panel. And then I laid it down and um, put the panel on top of it and begin by attaching one end. And basically you just have to measure Make sure that the fabric is, is where it needs to be so that it fits properly. And uh, go all the way, work all the way across from one end to the other. And then start stapling once you feel comfortable it's in a good spot. I found it worked best to staple the middle and then staple each end. And then maybe cut that in half and staple in the middle of those staples. And then once you got that pretty well laid out, then you could just start stapling across as, you know, one right after the other. I'd always use the finished end of the fabric, if I could find it, uh, to, to start out with. That way I didn't have to trim that end, only the other end. 
then you just take your fabric and pull it up over top and this is an important step you need to stretch it out good but not too tight you don't want to have it uh, too tight but you want it you know nice and firm um, this is felt fabric that I'm using here black felt and it's very forgiving really easy to work with whatever fabric you use make sure it's breathable fabric in other words uh, fabric that you can breathe through easily or blow through easily so just kind of take your time to work with it work it back and forth make sure you get all the creases out um, kind of see how I'm doing that there I'm kind of pulling it down with my hand working it over and then just kind of folding it up, up over onto the wood and getting all the uh, slack out of it and then I do my first staple and again stretch some more on each end just take your time make sure it uh, comes out nice and firm and smooth Oop, mosquito and then once I got that far then I just did a couple there and then just kind of going right across and it worked out really well once that's done just take a nice sharp scissors and uh, cut your fabric even with uh, the inside end of your um, of your side panel next you'll want to cut your insulation bats again a good way to measure it is to use your acoustic ceiling tile which is what you'll be using to uh, finish off your back end the bat and the tile together are just the right thickness and they're both the same length here you can see I just put two pieces together because it's um, I want a bigger bigger uh, bigger one in this case a bigger panel than just one that would fit one insulation bat if you're making panels as wide as your bats then you just cut your tiles instead of your bats taking time here to make sure that everything is as square as possible Then I had this old hunting knife laying around that I never used for anything, so I decided to use that. It's nice and sharp. It works pretty good, but to cut rock wall uh, insulation, your best bet is using a serrated knife of some sort, like a bread knife. But this works. You just got to be a little more patient with it. And it didn't make a nice, neat cut. In fact, it got a lot worse as the blade became duller with use. But, as you'll see, it comes out good enough. Then I just took my two bats and uh, put them in uh, into the into the uh, panel. And it takes a little stuffing. If you get your measurements right, you do want it you you want it tight. You want the insulation to go in there, you know, fairly firmly, but not uh, where it's bulging out or whatever. But as you can see, I got this one cut really good. So it's coming out nice. Then I just lay my acoustic panel on there. And if your sides are bowed in, just kind of bend them out a little bit and pop it right in. Got this so it fits a little bit snug. Not you know not so that the ends are breaking off or anything, but there's a little bit of a snugness to it, which is nice. Then I attach my one by two back braces, and. Uh, those fit right across the top of the acoustic tile which holds it in place and uh, in this case I think I used maybe two inch screws and again re running uh, pilot holes and just a matter of getting everything square getting everything cut to length then running your pilot holes and uh, your screws Here's my center brace. So basically, you end up using three one by twos uh, to hold the uh, hold the panel together in the back, hold the acoustic tile in place, and 
And once I get my three um, cross pieces in, then I uh, fold my fabric around the back. I usually put in one staple to kind of hold that in place and then fold the rest of it over again stretching the fabric so it's comfortably snug and then just take your time folding this crease just to get it um, so it looks nice once you get it folded and it looks nice take a, put a staple in on both ends and then work your way across Then again, take your scissors and cut off your excess all the way across. As you can see, I measured pretty closely, so there wasn't a lot of fabric to cut off in this case. Here I'm doing the other end, finishing that up. And voila, a finished panel. Ta-da! In the case where you have leftover bats of insulation um, that are a different width than what your ceiling tiles are, then just cut your ceiling tiles to fit. And you do that again by laying out your bats, measuring, and then just take a sharp utility knife and a straight edge like a, le uh, a level in this case and make your cut. I think I scored it uh, two or three times across, uh, each time going a little deeper. And then you can just carefully break off the end. And then of course you have to cut your, uh, your 1x2s to that length in order to make your panel that size. So, you know, just work with your materials, with leftover materials, and keep working with it the most efficient way you can, and you, you, get, you get different sized panels, which is fine. Here's an important part, because when you hang your corner panels into your ceilings, like this one you'll see here, you have to cut your 1x2s at an angle on the ends in order to, for them to fit nice and snug against your wall and your ceiling. As you can see here, and I'll get up close here, and you can see how that is at an angle. And uh, you'll want to do that, otherwise it won't, it won't be a nice tight fit against your wall and ceiling. To do that, I just simply took my 1x2s after they were cut to length, and uh, just cut off a 45 degree angle. And you can see there how those look, and uh, once I get this cut made here, you can kind of see what they look like. And just sand those down, and you're good to go. Okay, of course you can just uh, attach them to the wall, uh, put brackets in the wall. If you want to bring them out from the wall a little ways, it's always recommended, as far as you can get them. But what I did is I built legs, uh, so that I could... Uh, mostly make them portable. I built legs that can come off and as you can look here you can see the design of this and this is basically leather uh, to go to hold the legs in place. This was some belt building um, leather that I bought off the internet. Put two screws in uh, to hold them in place and those legs can just slide right off. The advantage is that I can move them around the room, take them any place that I want to and they stand up just fine. Construction mostly glue and a couple of screws. The bottom back brace of the panel rests on the front part of the legs, as you can probably see there. Uh, the key is to make them balanced, and so you just got to get the right balance on there. The center of gravity will make them want to lean forward, so you have to get those feet out far enough uh, to counteract that. Okay, that's pretty much it. So good luck in uh, putting your own together. Hope it goes well for you.